Today we will continue to talk about yarn dyes. So let's start our lesson number six. Let's open our plaid with warp and web layers. Let's start to convert it to stripey layout. When the factory is weaving stripes, they make warp or weft solid. Design-wise and price-wise, they usually make warp stripey and weft solid. So most of yarn dye fabrics have vertical stripes, like this. Let's convert our plate to stripes. It's very easy. Go to our layered file. As you remember from lesson number five, we have warp layer and weft layer. Go to weft layer and fill it with any solid color. For instance, this one. Select all, edit, fill. We have stripe layout. Now we can continue to do our favorite recoloring method. Flatten image, image mode, index color, and start to recolor. Another recommendation, when you do stripes, try to make light background and contrast stripes. Design will look more interesting. Now let's go back to our layered plaid layout. As you remember, we fill mask with plain weave texture. But there are many types of texture. One of the most popular twill texture. Let's create a separate file, we will call it texture file and let's start to create twill texture. Go to line tool, choose width about 10 pixels, you can choose also wider or narrow and create a black line with 45 degrees and any length. Always choose 45 degrees, it's easier to create repeat. Then make white line, then repeat few times. Here we have enough to create small twill repeat. As we can see, repeat is from here to here vertically and from here to here horizontally. Let's put guides. One little hint. If you choose 45 degrees diagonal texture, you need only distinguish one direction of repeat. Select rectangle marquee tool, hold down shift key, drag to any repeat mark, vertical or horizontal, and you will select repeat of new texture. Then select edit, define pattern. Now go to the mask window. Again, be sure you select mask thumbnail, not layers thumbnail. Go select all, edit, fill, pattern, our pattern, see, we have a new plaid. I mean the same plaid but with twill texture. One moment, you don't have to erase mask before fill it with new texture in this case. But in future we may have some complicated design when it's necessary. Let's see the next trick. As we remember, we have two weave direction, warp and web. Sometimes your client may ask to make one weave direction more pronounced than another. Usually it's warp. Why? Because when vertical direction is more pronounced, the design looks more elongate vertically, so it flatters more to your client. Look. What is the best way to achieve this look? If we look at our mask, as we remember from our lesson number 5, click on mask thumbnail with alt key hold. We see the equal amount of black and white areas. The same with twill texture and with plain weave texture. That means we see the equal percentage of warp and weft. If you want warp to be more pronounced, we need to see more warp area than weft area. So warp needs to be more revealed and weft more hidden. In our case, weft is on upper layer. So the mask needs to have more black and less white. Let's start to recreate twill texture with no equal white black balance. Create black line in the same width, 10 pixels, 45 degrees. Then create white line, but six pixels width, 
then repeat several times. Then select the repeat with Rectangle Marquee tool. Select Edit Define Pattern. Then go to the Mask thumbnail, select All, Edit, Fill, Pattern, Our Pattern, and we have the same plaid with twill texture, but warp is more prominent than web. Now, what if we didn't distinguish correctly the black and white balance, and unfortunately you have a wrong direction pronounce, or you or your client have just changed your mind and decide to make weft more distinct? Do you have to recreate texture repeat? Absolutely not. With this method, you always can change the layer balance instantly. Look. Click on Mask thumbnail, go to Image, Adjust, Invert. So Mask colors inverted immediately. Black becomes white and white becomes black and warp becomes more prominent. We can do this with other types of texture. Remember, plain weave is always equal. But we can come up with another unequal texture, one of the very popular. Make a black rectangle, then repeat it and place it next to the first one but little bit shifted. Then repeat it again, then select repeat and fill the empty areas with a white. Then do as always edit define pattern. Then go to the mask thumbnail, select all, edit fill pattern, our pattern and we have the same plate but with new uneven texture, where warp is more prominent than weft. Again, we always can change the balance using Go Image, Adjust, Invert option. Don't forget about stripes. We can always make them more or less prominent, changing mask texture and the black and white balance of texture. Now I want to show you one more trick. Let's go back to our plaid with twill texture. It looks very pretty, but we can make it look even more realistic. If you look closer, you see that twill lines are very straight and flat, whereas the real fabric looks a bit fuzzy. How to add fuzziness to the print and do not gain additional blurriness? Let's go to Mask thumbnail, click with Alt Hold. Then go to Filter, Filter Gallery, Spotter. With moving sliders, we can adjust the visual fuzziness of the texture pattern. Click OK. Go back to Layer Thumbnail. See? Now texture is kind of irregular and the plate looks almost like real fabric. Another tip. Be careful with Filter option. This filter, Spotter, doesn't add additional half tones to the mask. It keeps it black and white. So your print doesn't gain additional colors when you go to Index Color Mode, whereas some of other filters create additional gray colors. Look, here we have one of the most beautiful filter effects, water paper. Click OK, then click on Layers thumbnail. Look how pretty our plate is. Can we leave it as is and keep it beauty and change colors? Yes, we can. Stay in RGB, go to one layer, in our case it's weft, and change colors one by one using Paint Bucket tool. Then go to the next layer warp and change colors on it in the same way. This process takes longer time and creates more problems to the vendors, so I don't recommend it to use unless you need your artwork for very high level presentation or for some very fancy boards. You can even adjust texture inside the mask or even add one filter to another, creating very interesting effect.
but in the same time you always can turn it back to black and white texture, which is definitely more appropriate for sending to the factory. How? Let's see the little cheating trick. Make your print look realistic for the presentation using fancy texture. When you got your approval from the client, go to Mask thumbnail, go Image Adjust Threshold. Your texture becomes black and white. Click on layer thumbnail. It kind of lost the attraction a little bit, but it's still pretty and looks much easier for the vendors and much easier for color changing. If you know this method, you can ultimately create any black and white texture or even use any from internet. Go online type black and white fabric seamless texture. You can add free and you see million of them. Look, herringbone, isn't it pretty? Copy this image, open in Photoshop, select all, define pattern, go to mask, edit, fill with pattern. Nice for presentation. Go to image, adjust threshold. Great for sending to the vendor. Now it's important. When you send it to the vendor, they see the entire design, but it's necessary for them to see warp and weft separately. So go to mask thumbnail, select bottom area. If your upper layer is weft, fill selected area with black. Be sure you are on mask thumbnail, not layer. Then select left or right area, I prefer left, and fill it with white. I recommend to flatten image only after that, so your vendor can see the entire design with texture, the area with warp, and the area with weft. Now we can go to index color, create different colorways, as many as you want, and send it to the factory. So now we know how to create plaids and stripes using equal and not equal warp weft balance and know how to use different types of texture to achieve the realistic look of any plaid design. So please subscribe to my channel, like it if you still didn't and please don't forget to check your bell. Next time we will talk about knit design. See you soon.